just, oh, this music is so good. Hello, my friends, welcome back to the channel. I'm really excited for this video because we're listening to one of my favorite choral pieces of all time, Locus Iste by Bruckner. And it's being performed by one of my favorite ensembles, the Tenebrae Choir. The Tenebrae Choir is a London-based ensemble that was founded and is conducted by the one, the only, Nigel Short. I love this piece, I love this ensemble, so get your popcorn ready, put your feet up, let's dive in. It's a very warm and open beginning of this piece, and it's challenging because it's in C major, and the basses have a C, and the sopranos have a C. So they really have to tune those octaves, and if not, it's gonna be a bit of a wonky start. But of course, the Tenebrae Choir does this beautifully. It sounds like we're using Italian Latin, which is very phonetic. Locus iste adeo factus est. I've sung this piece many times, and every time I've done it, I've really struggled to get that tuning on the opening chord. I mean, as a bass, when you sing the root of the chord all the time, you think you'd be used to it, but in a song like this, I, I just am a bit hesitant at the beginning. But it doesn't sound like anybody's hesitant in this video, so thank God I'm not there. So the first phrase starts in C major, the second phrase starts in D major, and it's not often that back-to-back -back phrases go from a major one to a major two, that's uncommon. So if we looked at the music theory side of this, it's really one, and then five of five, which is D major, and then five, which is G major, and then we're back into C. So it's, a, it's an interesting progression to start a choral piece. So of course in this piece, the basses have those big solo moments. Adeo factus est. And it's marked forte. So if the bass section as a whole doesn't give it 100%, it's gonna sound weak, it's not gonna be very effective and Bruckner will probably turn over in his grave. So after the dramatic Adeo, we bring it down in dynamic. We have piano. Adeo, deo, do, ti, do. Really, really hard to tune, especially on a Sunday morning. Let's listen back to that and listen for the tuning of the basses. Do, T, Do. So the tuning is quite good, and I just noticed something that the basses are doing to help them with their tuning. The words that the basses are singing are A, Deo. And it's very tempting to go A, Deo and make it really dark and kind of far back in the mouth. If you do that, the tuning will go flat. And in a piece like this, when you're in C major, if you go flat into B major, it's gonna be horrible. So what the basses are doing, specifically this bass, is he's keeping it bright. Adeo. To keep the pitch up. And that is a really great tool to use, especially in choral music when you have to blend with other voices, because if you dip in pitch, it's just gonna be a disaster. So, adeo, adeo. I think of Latin as a very bright language anyway, so if you can keep it even brighter, then your tuning is gonna be better. So to compare the two, the dark version is adeo, and the bright version is adeo, adeo. So we keep the same vowel, we keep an open E on deo, because that's the rule for Italian Latin, but we brighten it up, adeo, deo. In this section, we've moved into a few different keys. I'm just referencing the score here. We've gone to B flat major, we've gone to A major, back to C major, a bit of A minor mixed in there. There's a lot going on. The basses really need to carry this section. There's two very dramatic solo bits that they have to sing, and if they're not really together, then it's gonna fall apart. But this is the tenebrae choir we're talking about, so of course, 
They sound good, they're locked in, they're all together. For the basses in particular, and I know this because I've sung this piece so many times, you really have to be listening to the other singers in your section. It's particularly difficult if you're in a choir loft situation where choir one is on one half, choir two is on the other half because it's hard to line it up. So you really, really, really have to use your ears here. I'll put it up on the screen right now, but ensemble is particularly important in inestimabile, in the dotted quarter note and eighth note. If the basses aren't together on the eighth note, it's going to sound like really bad ensemble. And what you'll notice is the tenor, the alto, and the soprano sections are all just singing quarter notes, which means that the basses in that moment are singing an offbeat. So if that's not really locked in, then it's gonna sound like really bad ensemble. What a good conductor might do is have all the other voice types listen to the bass part. So maybe they would get the basses to sing it on their own so everybody else can hear exactly what the basses are doing so they know it's inestimabile. The same thing happens a few measures later when we approach C major again and we have the dotted quarter note with the eighth note in the bass section with the tenor, alto, and soprano just singing quarters. If that's not together, it's gonna sound real bad. such beautiful music and it's so beautifully presented by the Tenebrae Choir. It's, it's astounding. There's so much to unpack with each section I almost don't know where to start but let's start at the beginning of the section. We've now axed the basses. Bye bye basses. And composers will often do this when they want that lightness. They want that treble sound in the section and by having the basses in there it will add a level of vibration and bass that we just don't really want at that point in time. One really great example of this is in the Mozart Requiem when we have the basses and the tenors sing confutatis maledictis, and then when we get to the vocame, it's just sopranos and altos, and they're just sort of floating up there. Something similar is happening in Locusiste. I also wanna highlight one singer in particular who's doing something really, really helpful in a choral setting. Now, I don't know their name, unfortunately, but if you know who they are, please send this to them. So I'm pausing it just when the sopranos and altos join the tenors. This singer is doing something very, very subtle, but very effective, and that is they are breathing into the vowel that they're about to sing. Sopranos and altos first vowel is E, 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 not E, but E. The taller, the more north-south you can think of an E vowel, the better. So what this is going to do is decrease the buffer time between breathing and singing. So if you do E, there's that whole moment of time between when you make the A vowel when you breathe and then the formation of the E vowel. But if you go E, you're already in position. So it's very subtle and it's a very small amount of time, but it actually makes a huge difference. You become more of an efficient singer when you think of breathing like this. So good job, singer. The beginning of this piece, we were highlighting the basses. They had these awesome dramatic solo moments that they'll have again in a moment. And then we moved into the tenors being sort of at the forefront. Now, the last four measures of this lighter section, I think we've now given the reins to the sopranos. So from watching Nigel Short and what he's doing in this moment, he's really highlighting and bringing out that beautiful soprano line. We've had really chromatic, small intervals at this point, but now we have a beautiful, perfect fourth sung by the soprano. So he's bringing that out. He's letting it come out of the texture.
What I really like about the way the Tenebrae Choir is approaching this piece is they're being really lazy with their texts. And I don't mean that they're, they're being sloppy or they're not pronouncing their words, but they're just not exerting that much effort because they don't really need to. So, locus iste adeo factus est. You can keep that really small. You don't have to do locus iste adeo la la. You don't need that amount of effort. So this is a clear example of less is more. They're doing such a good job of this. And we can compare this to a Handel's Messiah or a big dramatic oratorio where you might need really strong consonants all the time and you have to give so much effort text-wise. In this setting, in this, with this piece and in this place, you really don't need to do a whole lot. Excellent. So now we have some really cool dramatic, chromatic, dramatic, chromatic. That could be something. I put that on a t-shirt or something. Chromatic, dramatic moments that are leading us to something that I think is going to be especially sublime. In this final section, we've made this big crescendo. There's something going to happen. And there's so many directions that Bruckner can go in. Is he going to continue with that dramatic sound? Is it going to be forte, fortissimo? Are we going to end with a bang so the audience knows when to clap? Or will he take it a different route? Will he make it quieter? Will he, he sort of die down? So this is what's exciting about choral music is you don't always know what direction you're going to go in. But just before that, we have a grand pause. We have this moment of calm, of serenity. Don't really know what's going to happen next. Maybe it's a moment for you to reflect. Maybe it's a moment for you to appreciate silence. You know, John Cage would be proud of that. And for the performers, it's a chance for them to go, okay, take a breath. Let's finish this thing. Just, oh, this music is so good. Good old Bruckner, he went the sublime route. He went the emotional, the, the gut-wrenching route. And this ending might sound really simple, and certainly the Tenebrae Choir makes it sound simple, but it is not. The hardest part, for me at least, is lining up the ctus of factus and the s of factus. There's just so much to line up in that moment. And if we look at the score, it's a whole note tied to a half note. So it's longer than you might think. It's basically one and a half measures long. And then you have to sing the ktus part of factus. But Nigel Short, of course, does an incredible job of keeping everybody reined in. Let's go back a few seconds and look at the conducting of Nigel Short. Just for a moment, I want you to look at his left hand. That is what's going to be controlling the dynamic. And then he will cut everybody off. So with his left hand, he slowly brings it down very, very gently, and the ensemble fades into the distance, and then he cuts them off. Choral music is so good because there's so many options. You know, nothing is set in stone. It's typically a traditional way of doing something, but you can break tradition. Somebody else might do this piece slower. They might do it faster. There's so many options. There's so many choices that a choir can make as a group. And that's what makes this music so exciting. That's it for today's video, my friends. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, thoughts, or concerns, please leave them down in the comment section below.
A special thank you to the Tenebrae Choir for their incredible performance, their sensitivity, their attention to detail. They're just pros. If you want to support me as a creator and make more videos like this happen, then subscribe to my Patreon. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video.